All right, guys. I mean, is that amazing? Cut by a half dozen teams, and now he's got his own podium Super Bowl week. It's amazing. He's it is. been part of a significantly improved Niners rushing attack. Second in the league during the regular season. Look what they're doing in the playoffs. 235 and a half yards per game? You kidding me? Now, what happens if the Chiefs slow this down? Can the Niners still be victorious, Mooch? They might slow him down because the Chiefs slowed down yeah. Derrick Henry, mm -hmm. and he was he was knocking it out of the park too. Uh, almost 200 yards a game rushing, three in a row going into the yeah, last one. I remember that. They held him to 85 yards rushing, 3.7. So they did a good job of tackling, loading up the box, but uh, you know then you got to take care of the play action pass, and and the Niners do that as well as anybody. Uh, Ryan Tannehill did that well, but not well enough. You know they only had 295 yards of offense, and so. That Chiefs defense is much improved. Well, I think part of the, 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 the Chiefs, what they did to the Titans, they were scoring points at will, too, at one point. I mean, they were scoring in two minutes and 30 seconds. They kind of took the Titans out of running the ball. But the one thing the San Francisco 49ers are going to do, regardless if they're up or down, Kyle Shanahan is going to run the ball, Mooch, and we know that because it sets up their play-action pass game, sets up their quick game, and when they want to take shots. So the key is you have to limit and set edges. You can't allow George Kittle to take Frank Clark and mm -hmm. run him down the sideline and create these big holes. You have to fit your gaps as a linebacker in safeties. You have to play sound football in order to stop this. And then the other thing that the Niners do, same thing the Chiefs, they do a lot of shifts and motions where he gets a ton of defenders' eyes all over the place, and then they just run right down, you know, right down your throat. And so, in this situation, you have you can't have eye violations. You have to know where the ball's going. What's an eye violation? Where your eyes aren't where they're supposed to be, and you're looking at the Debo Samuel run this way, and the ball's running right by you. You just make that up. I've never I heard of it. like a shot clock eye violation. Yeah, come on, Moose, stop that. All right, so we just heard from uh, Travis Kelsey and George Kittle during the team's joint appearances. You can see the numbers. They're two of the three tight ends that had 1,000-yard receiving seasons. And it's the first time in Super Bowl history that the first and second team all-pro tight ends will square off in the Super Bowl. Who's going to have the bigger day, MJD? Well, we were just talking about this off-air. I feel like the tight end position has kind of moved up the charts a little bit because of the way teams are being utilized. Mm -hmm. and, and for me, it's going to have to be Travis Kelsey. He's going to have to be able to control the middle of the field. If he can control the middle of the field and force that coverage to kind of bear down on him, then it's going to open up for those guys on the back end, Tyreek Hill, Nicole Hardman, Sammy Watkins, Robinson, those kind of guys. Also, when they line up every receiver and they try to run the ball, he's going to be blocking those corners, so blocking Richard Sermon, keeping him out of the way because we know those corners for the Niners like to make tackles. So it really is, this is going to be a big game for, for Travis Kelsey. He has to go out there and make some big-time plays. You know what? Jimmy G threw the ball eight times last game, okay? That's so I, I don't know how many catches Kittle's going to get. But, but he's a great blocker. He's a, he's a great blocker. He's a pancake blocker. Yeah. You ever show you that? Here's another thing we we're talking about because just for the viewers at home, the quarterback is the most difficult position to play in sports, I believe. Anyway, the tight end now, it has evolved right. into something that's really different than it used to be 20 years ago or even 10 years ago because now these guys, and these are the two best right now, okay? Mm -hmm. They have to play in line and be a tight end and block people, not just linebackers, but sometimes defensive ends. Then you play them in the slot. you got to learn that passing tree and all the adjustments. you got to play outside as a receiver. They're putting them in the, in the backfield now. They'll be a fullback. Travis Kelsey was a wildcat back. There's so much to learn for these athletic tight ends now. It's impossible to be great at everything, but these are the two best yes. right now. They do it all, man. You know, George Kittle has caught four passes in the postseason, and That's that offense has just lit it up <laughs> left and right. That shows yeah. you how on point they are, especially running the football. The Chiefs will score points, and Jimmy G is going to have to complete passes and complete them down the field. A lot of it comes off the play action movements and keeps that they're very good at. I love to watch their run game, but every time they run the ball, they've got play actions off the same thing. I, I love watching it, but Jimmy G is going to have to step up and probably complete 20 passes. Well, if you're a Niners fan, you, you hope no, right? right? You hope that sure. you have a lead and you're able to run the ball the way they've been able to run the ball. But I personally think that the way the Chiefs are able to score, we saw what they were able to do against the Tennessee Titans. We saw what they were able to do in the wild or in the divisional round. And so you want to make sure that Jimmy is going to have to throw the ball somewhere in this game to try to either extend the lead or come back. And so he's going to, you're right, Mooch, I think he's going to have to throw the ball somewhere between 18 to 25 times. And you're going to have to complete 80% of those. Can he win a game? Can he win this game? 
Jimmy G, you know, he's kind of the Rodney Dangerfield on this team because we talk about those five first-round picks. We talk about the great run game, and we ask, is he is he more than a game manager? Yes, he is. He's the only guy in the league that's come from behind by 10 points to win three different games this year. He's good in the fourth quarter. They just don't ask him to do that a lot. But when it's crunch time, he's been pretty darn good. And, he's you know, he takes more sacks than, he, than I'd like to see him. But you know what? Jimmy G can get it done if they ask him to. Well, when he's on time and he's on schedule, yeah, he's one of the better quarterbacks in the league, and that's the thing. He has to be on time and on schedule. That's why you see the boot, the, the plays that we're seeing now, they're all, like, within, you know, you know, three to five seconds of him getting the ball. So it's when he has to improvise when they get in trouble. So you hope that, that if you're a Niners fan, you're hoping that you can run the ball, the play-action pass opens up, and then I the quick game What's your confidence going. level, scale of one to ten?